Mm. Coffee. What is up everybody? My name is Ben TK and today we'll be learning how to do that gimbal hyper zoom you just saw. This has been one of the most requested tutorials I've ever had and I'm finally putting it together for you guys. I'd also like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Whether you need a website or a domain, make it with Squarespace. Now before we jump straight into the editing, first we have to learn how to film this correctly so it goes together really well in post. So today we're in my home city of Melbourne and in order to do the gimbal hyper zoom, you do need to get a gimbal. You need to have your gimbal in lock mode. This is the mode where you turn around and it just stays put in the exact same direction you set it in. But today we're also going to be needing to turn some corners around these alleyways. So for that, I've changed it to the follow mode. So when I turn, it turns with me, but it doesn't go up and down. Now, all you really need to do is just point your gimbal straight down an alleyway or a straight laneway and walk from one side to the other. I guess it's time to begin. Even though we have a gimbal, it's still important to keep it as steady as possible so we have less work to do in post. The best lens to use for this is anything between a 16mm and a 24mm lens. Garbage truck. Goddamn garbage trucks. Okay, so now we have all our clips inside Premiere Pro. As you can see, I've got the alleyway clips here at the front. I've got this beautiful shopping mall clip here with the awesome light on top of the roof, which I've spun around with the gimbal and shot off in the other direction because I like to shake things up a little bit, you know? And I've got these other clips here of a walkway with some bakeries and coffee shops. Now, the first thing that you want to do which is absolutely crucial, is to make sure you place the clips that best match each other next to each other. For example, this clip here ends with a turn and this clip next to it starts with a turn and they're both in the same direction. So at the end, when we fix this up, it's gonna look seamless. So to create this effect, we can realistically do this in Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is a little bit limited when it comes to doing really awesome effects. So to get the most out of this gimbal hyper zoom effect, we're gonna highlight everything, right click, and replace with After Effects composition. So if you have After Effects, awesome, keep watching. <laughs> okay, so now we are in After Effects. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some time remapping to make things a little bit quicker and uh, not like this. I shot this in a low shutter speed because I was experimenting a little bit. Right click on the clip, go to Time, enable Time Remapping. And these two markers that get put down, they get put at the start and the end of your clips. So let's go to the very end of this clip. So let's go to the time remapping, create a keyframe. Uh, we don't need this other one. We're gonna drag the M1 really close to the other one and this will speed up the clip, um, condensing the time in between these two keyframes. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to each one of these clips here. Okay, so I've just time remapped each clip here. So now they all move together really quickly and I've also organized them and put them neatly next to each other. So now it's looking pretty good. This is a clip of me walking down the alleyway for a very, very long time. Do the time remapping thing with this as well. Enable, time remapping. And because this clip is really long, I'm just gonna stretch it out and then find the end point that I want. Probably where this guy puts his hands up. I'm gonna set a keyframe, pull this all the way back. So this is gonna speed this clip up dramatically. So we wanna pick a speed that looks about right. This is actually pretty good. I'm actually quite happy with that speed. I might just leave it how it is. There's not much, there's not much else I really need to do to that. Next clip, we have this beautiful clip of the shopping center inside and that light on top of the ceiling. Okay, so I'm gonna right click on this, time remap this clip as well. We're literally gonna time remap everything, okay? We wanna speed everything up. So it goes really fast and shoots back out, perfect. Now we actually want to transition these two clips. We don't want them to just be hard cuts with each other. As you can see at the moment, it just hard cuts into the next clip. But what we're going to do is we're going to drag the newest clip we just adjusted on top of the other and we're going to pull it across just a little bit. What we need to do is we need to click on the arrow here on the clip we're going to adjust. Go to transform, opacity, set a keyframe. It's on 100% at the moment, so we're going to move it further on. And then we're gonna set we're gonna set another keyframe and change it to zero. And this is gonna allow it to fade in nice and smoothly. So when it turns the corner, it fades into the next clip like it's part of the alleyway. That looks great. Awesome. Next clip. Coming from the bins out to the coffee shops and the bakeries. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna time remap that and I'm gonna do the opacity transition technique as well. 
Okay, that's looking pretty good. Sweet, we're getting somewhere. So when this one turns the corner towards the end of the clip, this one starts turning into the next clip. So we can easily match those up. I've just adjusted those two clips. You can almost not even tell that they're two different clips. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a masking transition. So we're gonna go from this clip into this clip here, but we're gonna mask it. I'm just gonna grab this clip here and I'm gonna drag it over the last clip just a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and grab the pen tool or the mask tool and I'm gonna create a hole in this doorway just by drawing around the edges. I'm gonna cut that guy out. As you can see, the mask has cut out this little section for us. Now what we wanna do next is click on our mask, which is on that layer, and then click mask path. So it saves the path and saves every change we make to it. Nothing worse not clicking that and doing heaps of adjustments to find out it's done absolutely nothing. So I'm actually gonna click subtract. Now we can see the other clip. Okay, so I'm just gonna go along and try and adjust the mask as close as I can to the door here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that clip that I just masked. And obviously it's gonna have a mask on as well. I'm just gonna delete that mask. But I'm gonna do the opacity trick with this as well. So I'm gonna go opacity, set a keyframe, move it to 100 towards the end and zero towards the start. So now we've got a gradual fade in of this clip here. It looks like they're all a part of each other. I used the same techniques as I used previously in a few other clips and we were almost done. Now for the final two clips, super easy. I ended this clip here by looking up at the ceiling and I started this clip by looking up at the clock. So these are two perfect matches. So I'm just gonna join them and already I don't need to do anything. Like it just transitions pretty well. But now it's time for the most important part. The thing that's gonna absolutely tie everything together and make it look really, really, really good. We need to add motion blur. Without motion blur, it's pointless. It just, it looks cheap and all the effects won't blend in as well. So right click on your composition, click new adjustment layer. And then we're gonna go up to effects type in motion, and then you should have some motion blurs pop up. Choose CC force motion blur. Click and drag this onto the adjustment layer, and instantly we have motion blur on all of our clips. Now, as you can see with CC force motion blur, we have some frames here that we can still see from the motion blur. These are the motion blur samples. We wanna make this look more smooth. I'm just gonna go up and click the eight here and type in 30. And that's gonna make it look a lot smoother. Instantly, you can see a dramatic change. Keep in mind, the higher this number here, the longer it's gonna to take to render on your computer. So I'm actually pretty happy with this, and I think I'll render this out and show you guys what the final result looks like. But before we get to that, a quick moment from my sponsor. Squarespace is an amazing platform for building a website or a domain, and comes with a ton of professional looking templates to give you a jump start on creating a sick looking page. Whether it be creating a portfolio for your photography, or just a place to put all your video work to show your clients. There is also 24 hour customer support, so if you get stuck on something, there's someone there to help you out. Building a website is essential for creating a successful online business. So head over to squarespace.com to start your free trial and when you're ready to launch head over to squarespace.com slash ben tk for a 10 percent discount need a website it's gotta be squarespace and here is the final result of what we just put together today Thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope this video didn't go for too long. I just wanted to get as much information to you as possible so you can do this correct and make it look really good. There's a lot more coming. I've got some great cinematic videos coming up next and some more tutorials, so stay on the lookout. Apart from that, my name is TK. Peace out, see you in the next video.